At exactly four o'clock Universal Time on October 3rd, something extraordinary happened. For months, astronomers had prepared for the moment when the interstellar object 3I Atlas would sweep past Mars, the closest approach it would ever make to any planet on its long one-way journey through the solar system. Every spacecraft orbiting the red planet, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, Mars Express, the Trace Gas Orbiter, was aimed and ready. Even the rovers on the ground, Perseverance and Curiosity, were tuned to listen for the faintest atmospheric changes. But what no one could have predicted was that, for the first time in history, humanity would witness an alien visitor not just passing by a planet, but interacting with it. What the James Webb Telescope captured that night, the auroras, the pulses, the impossible light, would forever change the way we look at the quiet darkness between the stars. As 3I Atlas glided silently through space, just 29 million kilometers from Mars, everything looked routine. A faint emerald glow surrounded its icy nucleus, a thin tail stretching toward the sun, all normal signs of a cometary body. But then, as if a hidden mechanism had awakened, the object began to brighten. Slowly at first, then violently, its coma expanded until instruments were forced to recalibrate in real time. Jets of gas erupted from beneath its surface, not water vapor, but something else entirely. Spectrographic readings identified carbon dioxide and cyanogen in concentrations no natural comet should emit. To the scientists watching the data flood in, it felt less like a comet reacting to sunlight and more like a controlled response. As the object drew nearer, the James Webb's infrared sensors picked up structured heat patterns across its surface, faint hexagonal regions glowing in unison. It was as if the comet was coming alive. Then came the phenomenon no one could explain, the Martian auroras. Mars, with its thin atmosphere and fragmented magnetic field, rarely experiences auroral activity. Yet as 3I Atlas passed overhead, ultraviolet cameras aboard the orbiters captured sweeping waves of light rippling across the planet's night side. The auroras weren't red or blue like those seen on Earth. They were green, the same eerie hue emitted by the comet itself. For several hours, the entire sky above Mars shimmered as though the planet's upper atmosphere had been electrified. NASA called it a magnetospheric interaction event. But the timing was too precise, the geometry too perfect. The comet had brushed against Mars, leaving the entire world humming like a resonant bell. The strange glow faded only after 3I Atlas continued on its path, yet instruments across all missions reported a residual electromagnetic vibration as if Mars had been marked by the encounter. Minutes after the auroras faded, the first fragments began to break away from 3I Atlas's nucleus. To astronomers' shock, the debris didn't scatter randomly. Instead, it spiraled, coiling around the comet like satellites maintaining formation. No natural breakup behaves like that. High-resolution imaging from Mars Express revealed that each fragment followed a curved trajectory before locking into position relative to the main body, moving as if responding to an unseen field. Scientists called it coordinated drift. Others whispered a different word, guided. At that same moment, the trace gas orbiter detected a massive methane spike in Mars's upper atmosphere. Methane, the planet's greatest mystery, known to appear in brief, inexplicable bursts, now surged higher than ever recorded, exactly synchronized with the comet's pass. Either 3I Atlas had deposited exotic ices that released methane upon contact, or something beneath Mars had been triggered by the encounter. And then came the sound, or rather, the vibration. The signal began faint, buried deep in the static of the orbiter's instruments. A low hum, repeating every 22 seconds, echoing across multiple spacecraft. At first, engineers dismissed it as electrical interference, the byproduct of the comet's charged tail brushing against magnetic dust. But when ESA's Mars Express and NASA's MAVEN compared data, the same rhythmic pulse appeared, identical in timing and structure, captured from completely different vantage points. This wasn't interference. It was a signal, not strong enough to be a transmission, but too organized to be random. Inside mission control, the debate began. Plasma resonance or artificial emission? Officially, NASA called it a natural plasma interaction. But off the record, some scientists saw a terrifying pattern. The pulse frequency wasn't arbitrary. 
It matched the internal rotation period of the comet's core, as if the object was broadcasting its heartbeat into space. After the flyby, when 3I Atlas had already crossed beyond Mars's orbital path, the James Webb Telescope was expected to lose visual contact within hours. But instead of fading into the background, the object did something no one could explain. It appeared to duplicate. Webb's infrared cameras began detecting a faint secondary echo of light moving perfectly in sync with the comet, like a reflection mirroring its path. The echo emitted no thermal radiation, no heat, and yet it was perfectly visible in certain wavelengths. Scientists first assumed it was lens flare, a data artifact caused by cosmic dust. But when the same reflection appeared in data from ESA's Mars Express, orbiting on the opposite side of the planet, the explanation collapsed. Whatever this second image was, it existed. The echo moved independently for a few minutes, shifting closer to Mars before disappearing completely. Then, in the minutes that followed, both Mars's ionosphere and the comet's electromagnetic signature changed simultaneously, as if some kind of energy transfer had taken place. Instruments aboard the MAVEN orbiter recorded a sudden measurable dip in the planet's atmospheric density, a literal compression of the upper layers of air, while Webb detected a short-lived but intense surge of ionized gas leaving 3I Atlas's surface. It was as though the comet had discharged a part of itself or released something into Mars's orbit. Two days later, just as scientists thought the anomaly had passed, the Perseverance rover sent back an image that froze mission control. Captured during its routine night sky observation, the photo showed a thin green arc hovering over the Martian horizon, faint but undeniably structured. When the image was enhanced, the arc revealed repeating lines, evenly spaced and symmetrical, resembling waves of light frozen in motion. The spectral analysis shocked everyone. The arc's wavelength perfectly matched the emission line of 3I Atlas's last recorded pulse. Whatever had happened during the flyby had left an imprint, a residual signature now embedded in Mars's upper atmosphere. As the team analyzed the image sequence, they noticed a second anomaly. The stars behind the arc appeared distorted, stretched, as though light itself was bending around something invisible. For a brief 0.7 seconds, a flash of infrared energy illuminated the scene, not from space, but from Mars's surface. The rover's sensors, designed to detect radiation bursts, picked up a faint echo returning from that flash, a coded vibration identical to the 22-second pulse once emitted by 3I Atlas. It wasn't coming from the comet anymore. It was coming from Mars. For days after the Mars flyby, everything seemed to return to normal. The orbiters stabilized, the auroras faded, and the comet 3I Atlas slipped quietly back into the cold darkness of interplanetary space. But deep inside NASA's data centers, something refused to fade. The electromagnetic pulse, the one that had echoed every 22 seconds, was still being recorded. It wasn't coming from the comet anymore. It was coming from Mars. The signal was faint, almost imperceptible at first, hidden within atmospheric noise. But over time, it grew sharper, more organized, like a voice finding its rhythm after centuries of silence. When scientists isolated the signal, they found it wasn't a simple repeating pulse anymore. It had structure. The intervals between each burst were changing slightly, forming harmonic patterns, the kind found in biological systems and artificial modulation alike. At first, researchers thought it was interference from Earth-based communications. But then came the discovery that made every screen in mission control go quiet. The frequency of the pulse matched the natural resonant frequency of Mars's crust, a vibration unique to the planet's internal composition. In other words, the planet wasn't just reflecting the signal, it was amplifying it, like a tuning fork hit by something immense and invisible. Mars was resonating with a memory of the comet that had passed by. Then came the thermal images. Weeks after the event, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter detected faint heat signatures scattered across the equatorial regions, circular formations, all perfectly symmetrical, all sharing the same spectral fingerprint as 3I Atlas's ionized gas. The pattern covered hundreds of kilometers, forming what looked like a geometric network, lines and nodes connected in a structure so precise it couldn't be natural. It was as if the energy released during the flyby had written something into the Martian crust. The discovery was classified immediately. 
Only a handful of scientists ever saw the images, and most of them refused to comment publicly. But one internal report leaked weeks later described it in chillingly simple terms. Residual field structure consistent with artificial encoding. Purpose, unknown. Meanwhile, the James Webb Telescope, still observing from deep space, detected something even stranger. The light around Mars's orbit began to flicker faintly in the same green frequency once emitted by 3i Atlas. It was weak, far too weak to see with the naked eye. But when enhanced, it revealed a perfect ring of radiation surrounding the planet. The ring wasn't expanding or dispersing. It was holding steady, like an electromagnetic orbit locked in place. And within that ring, a faint reflection appeared again, the same mirror image anomaly that had been seen during the flyby. But this time, it wasn't following the comet. It was stationary, locked over Mars. Then, on a quiet night six weeks after the event, every radio observatory on Earth, from Chile to Japan, picked up a faint transmission from the direction of Mars. A deep, low-frequency hum repeating at exact intervals. The sound was identical to the original 3i Atlas pulse, except for one difference. At the end of every seventh cycle, there was a distortion, a slight modulation that, when converted into binary, produced a sequence of numbers. The sequence was simple. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. The Fibonacci progression, the mathematical code of growth, structure, and life itself. The message wasn't random. It was evolution in numeric form, a pattern of creation, a code that builds itself. And that's when scientists realized the truth. The comet hadn't just passed Mars. It had activated it. The ionized gas, the electromagnetic transfer, the pulsing signals, all of it pointed to a process that had begun during the flyby. Something had been triggered within the planet's magnetic core, rewriting it, synchronizing it with the same resonance that once belonged to 3i Atlas. NASA publicly denied everything, calling the hum background cosmic interference. But the James Webb Telescope continued to pick up the signal, growing slightly stronger every week. Its frequency was no longer fixed. It was shifting, slowly but steadily, toward Earth's resonance band. No one can explain how an interstellar object could leave behind such a signature, or why that signal seems to be searching for a new harmonic match. But somewhere between Mars and Earth, the faint green light of 3i Atlas continues to shimmer, invisible to human eyes but clear as day to the web's instruments. It pulses with mathematical perfection, alive, patient, and steady. Maybe 3i Atlas was never a comet. Maybe it was a carrier, a vessel carrying information across galaxies, a seed searching for worlds capable of awakening. And perhaps in passing Mars, it found its first match. Because if the James Webb's readings are correct, then something on Mars is still responding. And if the frequency keeps shifting the way it has, Earth will be next.